Our next inductee will be introduced by Alan Leathers. At this time, please welcome Alan Leathers. What a great tribute to Coach Mahaney. That was fabulous. Uh, 19 years ago, it was my pleasure to uh, introduce Dave Parley into the Maine Running Hall of Fame. And now, uh, tonight, it's really a privilege and an honor to uh, introduce Dave into the uh, Athletic Hall of Fame here at Brewer. Uh, when I was, uh, uh, knew I was going to do this, I talked to Jimmy Garrity and I said, uh, how long is this supposed to be? And he said, well, make it like a woman's dress. Cover long enough for the essentials, but keep it short so it'll be interesting. <laughs> He, he is known for his uh, running, obviously, in the mile and the half mile. He's got records galore from the um, state of Maine and University of uh, Brown University. Uh, and some of those records still stand to this day, because 55 years later, the, those records still stand. But Dave was also uh, had quite a career in cross country and in the basketball, and he was the valedictorian of the class. Uh, all great accomplishments. Um, and one that I really uh, was, really strikes me is that if you followed sports, you knew back in uh, 1954, Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile barrier, which at that time just was, uh, you know, he gained him worldwide fame when he, when he broke that barrier. And it wasn't that many years after that that Dave, when he was in the Marine Corps, ran a, the equivalent of a 402 mile. So he was only two seconds behind Roger Bannister, basically, and I, that just really impresses me and, uh, you know, exemplifies somewhat Dave's career. Uh, I asked Dave, you know, one time, I said, what, uh, why do you attribute to your great success? And because we knew he's got just a natural gift and natural talent, but he said, you know, uh, I grew up in North Arlington and I had a big route. And uh, that paper route, the houses aren't very close together in Arlington, <laughs> and the, uh, that paper route stretched out for five miles. And he said, for some reason, I don't know why, but I just felt like running the paper route. So every day he ran five miles delivering newspapers for years. And so that set the stage for what uh, he was going to do, accomplish later on. One other thing that I'd like to do in introducing Dave is to talk a little bit about his basketball career and as it relates to the uh, mission statement of this uh, Athletes Hall of Fame. In the mission statement, one part of it reads, to inspire present and future student athletes to strive for excellence in all their athletic and non-athletic endeavors through individual effort, teamwork, dedication, and perseverance. Those, those last four words are really what's important. The, uh, individual effort, teamwork, dedication, and perseverance, because Dave went out for freshman uh, JV basketball, was cut, didn't even make the team, didn't play. So sophomore year, he went out for basketball again. He made the JV team, but he was on the uh, bench most of the year. And about halfway through the year, there was a game that was a, a blowout. And so the coach put in all the subs, but there was one problem, he forgot to put Dave in. So he, uh, the coach felt bad about that. He called Dave aside and said, well, I'm going to make up for that next game. And uh, you'll get to play. And you, you're a good outside shooter. And you, the old basketball courts, he said, you see that knot and that board on the floor over there? You, you, get, you position yourself by that knot. And when you get the ball, I want you to shoot. So Dave did. He got by the knot and he got the ball. And he made his first five shots. And he thought, wow, this is really good. I'm, I'm all set now. Well, he didn't play that much more the rest of that year either. But he didn't, uh, that didn't bother him. He went out junior year. He made the uh, JV team, and he was the uh, starting guard for uh, the whole year on, on the JV team. And uh, so you can see where those four uh, words that I was mentioning, the individual effort, teamwork, dedication, and perseverance come into play here. Because Dave, in his senior year, he went, uh, moved up to varsity his senior year, and from the very first game, he was the starting guard on the Eastern Maine Championship basketball team. And Dave brought a lot to that team. Uh, obviously, he brought his speed and his endurance. He could run up and down the court all night long. 
Uh, he was a great defensive player. He could lead the fast break. He could break at full court press. He could feed his other teammates for shots. And uh, Dave, uh, Dave could shoot too, especially if it was a knot in the floor. <laughs> But uh, we really didn't need, uh, there, there was no need for uh, any more shooters on the team because uh, there, there already was a pretty good shooter sitting right out back there by the name of Danny on that team. Uh, but, uh, and the things that Dave brought to the team really never show up in the statistics very much, but you don't have a championship team without somebody to play, to bring all the assets that, that Dave brought to the, to the game. And so I think it was very important. And, uh, what I would like to say, I think Dave is a really good role model for all these young athletes coming up now in Brewer and otherwise, uh, that they can see by what, by, by what Dave's role model, uh, that if you work hard and uh, persevere through the difficult times and the disappointments, then eventually something, we don't know what that something is, but something good is going to happen. And uh, with that said, I would like to introduce Dave Farley to the Basketball uh, Athletic Hall of Fame. <laughs> Congratulations to my fellow inductees. Uh, that is an incredible group of folks. Uh, not only great athletes, but great people as well. And uh, I'm just very proud to be part of that, that, that first group of the Hall of Famers. So, um, before I, I get done tonight, I really would like to talk a little bit about, and I won't do it right now, but about the people who are not here. Uh, I was class of 1960. There's an awful lot of people from 1915 to 1960, who should be considered for this organization, and, uh, and hopefully they will. I, I would like to mention a few names at some point. Um, also, I'd like to thank my wife Pat, class, real class of 52, 62. <laughs> Graduated from Brown in the class of 2001 at the age of 57. So I think that's something my legs. And also with her tonight is my father in law, her dad, Brigadier General Cliff Wood, who's not as old as Clara, but he's approaching 96 years old. And for me, that's pretty darn good. So. Also, um, my family roots go back at Brewer High School to 1931. My mother was a freshman in 1931. She graduated in 1935. She had seven children. All seven children graduated from Brewer High School. Uh, starting with Bud in 56. I was 60. Judy was 61. Uh, Dick was 62. Uh, Elizabeth was 67. And John, J-O-N, was 70. And Mark was 74. And when you add in all the sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and first cousins uh, of our family, uh, you're talking over 30 people who have graduated from Brewer High School in the last 80 some years. So uh, very proud of my family and my parents, obviously, when we kind of started the ball rolling. <laughs> also, I did make a couple of comments about a couple of my brothers. Uh, Dick and John were both on the track team. Mark was also. Dick and John were both 429, 430 miners in those days. That was pretty fast. And in fact, I think it's probably among the top three or four in the history of Blue High School. So, uh, 
it kind of hopefully runs in the family. Uh, I think uh, going back a little bit, I want to tell a couple of stories. Uh, Larry Mahaney is involved in a couple of them, um, but um, also is, so is Danny Coombs. But the first story is uh, Alan was right. I was cut from the basketball, JV basketball team. And it was actually after one trial, and like 50 kids showed up. We get four layup drills and we called it a night and then we picked this team. So uh, I was so disappointed. I was in sports was my entire life uh, going to high school. Uh, but my first two years at Brewer were pretty disastrous as it related to ath athletics. Um, Larry Mahaney in my freshman year, uh, Larry was also the gym co gym teacher. So we would play um, flag football, touch football uh, during, during gym. And so he would, he would be the quarterback and he would throw passes and I would catch a few passes and then I'd run everybody. So he decided that I would probably should be on the football team. I weighed 120 pounds. <laughs> and so he, he, he made me come out my sophomore year in the fall to play football. And I lasted four days. I decided I would, this was not for me, I was going to get killed. <laughs> the only good part about it was, as I remember, at the end of every workout for those four days, he would watch Winstress, the whole team would line up and sprint the length of the field. I do remember that I was always the winner in all of those four wind sprints, but uh, it didn't do me any good in the football. Uh, but at the end of my sophomore year, um, I thought, well, maybe I should go out for track or something, but um, it was like, the season was almost over, and I don't even remember who the coach was then. I may have been a grad student from the University of Maine or something. So I, some of my friends were on the track team, so I went down to the Doyle Field where they were doing the workouts. And I said to the coach, I said, well, you know, I'd like to try out for the team and can I run? He said, well, why don't you run around the field a couple of times and, and then come back and talk to me? So I did. He says, well, uh, we have a meet tomorrow at Old Town and, and we'll put you in the mile. And here's what I want you to do. Um, you know, the mile is four times around the track and you stay with our best miler, uh, Bobby Blanchard. Bobby, I think he's sitting over here somewhere. And uh, so, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And so we get up to Old Town on this old cruddy track. Um, and in fact, I didn't know what a track was. I'd never been on one. It was an old cinder dirt, dirt track. And uh, so the gun goes off, and uh, we're running the race, and I'm sticking with Blanchard. I have no choice. And two old town guys were up in front, one of which was placed in the state meet the week month the year before. And so with a lap to go, they shoot off a gun. And which I didn't know at the time, kind of scared me. <laughs> uh, so, so I started sprinting. Climbing the two old town guys, uh, probably within the first hundred yards. I'm sprinting down the back stretch, and a good friend of mine on the team, Harry Bowden, comes racing across the infield, screaming at me, saying, Slow down, slow down, you'll never make it. <laughs> so, I, so I slowed down. And, uh, but I still won the race and got a 501 mile. I didn't even know, is that any good? I didn't know I did. And so I, I was feeling really good about myself, and so I said to the coach, hey, they're starting the 220 over there, can I run the 220? And I said, sure, go on over there, go on. So I went over, and uh, in those days, we didn't have starting blocks, blocks, we didn't have uniforms, we didn't have a track, we didn't have track shoes, we didn't have anything. And uh, so I, they would dig you holes in the track, where you would put your feet in and place the starting blocks. So that's pretty cool. So the gun goes off and I'm sp I sprint with all my money. I finish last and I realized that that was probably not for me. Sprinting wasn't the way to go. And, uh, but after that, uh, I think we had another meet um, a week later and then the track season was over. So um, in junior year, we started a cross country team. Uh, Alton Black, who was our principal, uh, said that we haven't had a cross country team in Brewer in 30 years, so why don't we start a cross country team? And um, so, so we did. And uh, in my senior year, we did, we did doing cross country, we, we ran against JV teams because we weren't supposedly very good. And um, so, uh, in the outdoor track season that, that year would have been my, my junior year. Uh, I'm still running in high top basketball sneakers because uh, we had nothing. And, uh, <laughs> I think we, we did workouts around, around the school that was kind of like on track. And, uh, and by that time, uh, Harold Red Presley was our coach. He, he was a 
through high school graduate class of 50, went to Bowdoin, got his degree, he was also a chemistry teacher, and that's kind of how he knew this press. And uh, so he uh, was our coach. Uh, he was kind of learning along with us in that first year, because he'd never coached before. And uh, but anyway, so in, in, in spring track, um, I'm still running in high top basketball sneakers, and Keith Mahaney comes up to me one day. And I knew who Keith was, because he, was he was a great player at the University of Maine in basketball. And so he had this pair of track shoes that he was going to give to me. He says, uh, I noticed you running these basketball sneakers, and you, know, you really need a pair of spikes. And I said, cool. You know, and I, was, I, think, I think he said cool in those days. I wasn't sure. <laughs> so so I, Larry said he got them up at the University of Maine. I think he probably stole them from the University of Maine. <laughs> and anyway, it was a pair of uh, black uh, leather spikes. And the spikes were that long. And and so I said, gee, I thanked him immensely. He said, wonderful. I, I never won spikes before. So I, I, I tried him out on a work and almost killed myself. So, <laughs> so but he, he caused me to go off to White Sporting Goods to buy a pair of um, red spiking spikes, which was my first pair of attractions. And that was the week before the state meeting at Bowdoin. And so I, I thank Keith for causing me to go get those shoes. Uh, I ran at, the, at Bowdoin, they ran 11 seconds faster in the mile than I ever had before. And uh, again, wearing a white t-shirt and white shorts, and then nobody knew who I was, because I had a uniform. Uh, so an another story on, on cross country in our senior year, uh, this was also involving Mahaney, uh, he uh, had caused Danny Coombs to go out for the cross country team because he wanted him to get in shape for for basketball. Now Danny's 6'5", you know, 190, uh, running with all of us skinny guys, except we had one other guy who was a guy named Dale Green, who was about 6'3", 200. And uh, so it's really the only time in the history of cross country, or any meet I've ever been in, or heard of it, was he got into a fist fight with Dale Green <laughs> in the middle of a race. The race is over, and we're kind of wondering with Danny and Dale. And, uh, so we hear about the story, and literally, they got into a fist fight out on the course. And I still don't, this day, don't know. Maybe, Danny, you can explain it. Uh, it was a battle of who was going to finish last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I have another story about Danny then. Um, this also involves Coach Mahaney. Because Danny, you know, we're talking about Danny's two-sport two -sport athlete, basketball and baseball. But obviously, cross-country, he, you know, he did that. And uh, he also played football. And it's a little known fact, but it's true. And uh, Jim Gary was our quarterback, and a very, very good one. But late in the game, Mahaney, if we were behind or we needed a late-minute late, late minute touchdown, he would put Coombs into the, bank, the game to play quarterback and throw seven. 70 yard bombs with his left arm down the field. Of course, the opposition knew what he was in there for to do, so they all jumped back and there was all these Hail Marys. So he would throw a beautiful spiral down the field, 70 yards in the air. I don't ever remember anybody catching that. Ever. <laughs> That's so, why you should have stayed playing track. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> make a couple of comments about some of the old timers who are not here tonight. Some of the few actually might be here tonight. Uh, and, and not to put any pressure on the Hall of Fame committee because they have an awfully tough job to do. Um, and it's, it's a first year, you're talking a hundred years of athletics at Brew High School. That's a, that's a lot of people who are very, very deserving of being here at one time. And um, so I just like to comment about it's a group of people who, who I've done some research on and know about and have heard about, seen some of them play and compete. Um, st starting with Winslow Herrick in, in the class of 1918, uh, Barry, I Barry Ivers in 1929, uh, Milty Miles in 1935, uh, Slip Corey in 1939, uh, Beatrice Bud Park in 1940, uh, Bud Leifer in 1941, uh, Artie, Artie Wiles in 1948, uh, Andy Clement in 50, Harry Estes in 51, uh, the Holyoke boys, uh, Vaughn and Vern in 52, uh, the, uh, 
great Bobby Bauer in 1955, Tom Kelly in 1955, Ed Capane in 1956, um, Don Harnum in 1958, Ed Kiley in 58, Leroy Stewart in 58, uh, Norris Nickerson, who was mentioned in 58, he was a great athlete in the school. 1959, uh, Bob Hadley, uh, Bob McLeod, and Pud Robertson, the all the class of 59. Uh, Ronnie Rogerson, the class of 61. Uh, and of course, 1960, we still have a couple, a few more who were who are deserving of being considered, and that's Alan Williams, Dennis Denetestein, and Jim Garrett. And I haven't even mentioned the three coaches, uh, Dana Doherty, who was a coach in the, 30, the 30s and 40s, uh, uh, Laura Hoyt, and Charlie Henry, uh, all of whom are deserving of being considered. And I, I don't mean to talk about those names in, in, in lieu of all the folks who, who followed, because you're talking about 50 some years after 1961. Not only that, but you're talking about a lot of uh, girls' teams that started to proliferate in the 1970s and 1980s. And um, so uh, I, I don't envy the committee. We've got a really, really tough job ahead of you. But I just thought it would be helpful to mention some of those names. And I know I've left some off. I don't need to do that. And somebody else can get up here and come up with some other names. But just so you know, the history of Brew High School has a lot of fantastic athletes who, who, who brought honor prestige to this high school. And in closing, I would like to just make a comment about my high school coach, Alan Ray Preston, uh, who uh, was my first coach. I will never forget him. Not, not only that, in the classroom, but as well as coaching. And we kind of learned the sport together. And he coached for several years after that. Uh, had a great legacy at Grove High School. I was willing to thank him personally. So, thank you very much.